Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you see this video, I would like to offer your elemental energy reading for October of 2024 for the element of water. The element of water covers the zodiac signs of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So if you are a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or if you have water high up in your charts, then this reading is for you. And if you want to know where your elemental alignment is outside of your sun sign, there is a link in the description for a natal chart. This is your birth chart um, from the zodiac. Gives you your base circle with the 12 houses, all the little planets and symbols on it. And then it's a 10 to 20 page description of what all that means, which is significant. Um, and I have mine literally right next to my desk at all times because there's things that you just keep going back to and being like, I wonder, and you start going through it and it's like, oh, there, okay. And it's just, it's kind of fun to look at because it gives you generational information, your elemental alignment, what all the planets mean, what it means when they talk to each other like they do. Um, and if you are a <laughs> Zodiac, um, struggler like I am it really makes things simple so it's a pretty worthwhile um, pit tool to have in your uh, collection with that we will hop into our reading for October of 2024 um, we'll start with our I Ching hexagram and I cast the hexagram before going uh, recording the video saves a little bit of time and we have number 49 for water which is revolution leather and skin that's an odd title for um, well, anything really, but we'll go along with that. Revolution, not before the day of its completion will men have faith in it. Sublime success, determination in a righteous course brings reward, regret vanishes. So the leather skin part, I'm assuming means you need to, you're toughening up. You're getting to be able to make the changes in your life. You have to be a little bit thicker skinned in life. You can't allow things to by just emotions, water, we love our emotions, um, we can't allow those emotions to be the controlling factor, especially when other people are hurling darts at us. We need to be able to push that back, hold that at bay, because determination in a righteous course, meaning your course is actually for your better betterment and betterment of other people. Those are secondary, but you have to be looking at the positive in the situation. And it has to be a moral or ethical is what I'm also hearing. When we talk about righteous, it doesn't. We'll take it out of the religious connotation. It definitely does mean, though, that it is a moral or ethical thing. So, if what you're chasing is sketchy or shady, this is not going to be a righteous course. But if what you're after is something that is uplifting, something that is moral or ethical, that's what's going to bring you your the success. And not before the day of its completion will men have faith in it. People may watch what you're doing and go. Really, that's never going to work. And they can have their opinion because they don't have to understand it until the end. When they see the completed project, that's when they're going to come to the understanding of, oh, that water sign knew what they were doing. So that's where <laughs> that's coming up. But it's the, to make the change, the revolution in your life, it's definitely encouraging you to have a little bit thicker skin going forward in October. So let's go for the breakdown here. We'll start with our foundational line. For strength, use yellow ox hide. What does that actually stand for? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Basically, that's toughening up so that people's other people's opinions do not affect us emotionally, affect the water emotionally. With that strength, you gain that, weirdly enough, through quietness and meditation. And when people res sh throw something at you, the best course of action is to take a breath before you respond. That way you are calming part of your mind and catching your emotions before that knee-jerk reaction uh, occurs and that's what that's being brought forward here is it's definitely a good time to look at ways to master the self a little bit more especially in the realm of emotion so our second place line on the day of the revolution is completed to advance brings good fortune is free from error so when you actually complete the changes in your life this month, however that manifests for you, it's actually going to be very fortuitous. You're going to see that, yes, you achieved your goal, 
But there's a whole bunch of other stuff that may have fallen into place as well. That's where the free from error is. So you keep your eyes on the main thing that you're working towards. Anything else that comes up along that path, it'll settle itself. Don't worry about that. Just keep your focus on what's ha what you are working on to fix, change, or readjust. And when that occurs, you'll notice that everything else kind of falls into place is what this is saying. Our third place line, to advance now would bring misfortune and persistence would lead to further troubles. When talk of revolution has thrice arisen, then act with confidence. You don't have to make a big scene every time you're trying. I'm changing this in my life. That's unnecessary. On the um, To advance now would bring misfortune and persistence will lead to further troubles. Po follow your intuition because there's things that may be like, ooh, that would be a shortcut. That's not the good choice. And they're saying three times. So the first two shortcuts that you that are like, check this out, probably not your best options. Again, following your intuition, following your path of logic and reason, because everyone's gonna have a little bit different take. This one's saying by number three, you'll have the confidence to make that decision. And it might be number two for some of you, might be the first try for others. But that's where you tap into your intuition. Don't rush into things because that's where you uh, lead to troubles. So <laughs> you definitely want to take your time and really make sure what you're, the steps you're taking intuitively are guided by the right sources. So our fourth place line, regret vanishes and confidence is established. A change of government brings good fortune. When they talk about a change of government, it's a change of overall philosophy or mindset and sometimes that can shift that quick instantaneous um, like almost timeline leaping at that point but the other part of that is sometimes it's so subtle that people around you notice you don't feel like you've changed but everyone else is like whoa that was quite the shocker I didn't know you had that opinion or that thought and it's because it's you're doing it in such a simple way but you're doing it in such a confident way that it is there, there's no regret available because there's no regret option for you because the shift has occurred so that's that stepping into that a little bit thicker skin and being willing to make the changes which is that revolutionary action within your own life because we're not talking about other people this is for you <laughs> um, your fifth place line the great man accomplishes the changes the change like a tiger so he is confident that he does not need to employ divination Tigers move in silence. They are very powerful. Their takedowns are instantaneous when they grab a hold of something. And if you've ever seen a tiger paw, they're significantly <laughs> hefty creatures, but they move silently. The great man accomplishes the change like a tiger. You're swift, you're silent, it's done. There's not a bunch of hoo There's not a bunch of um, parading around. There's not a bunch of talk about it. It is done silently and swiftly. So when the steps are open to you, make those changes, make them quickly. Don't think, well, think about them, but not like worry about them. But it's definitely not parading it around for everyone else to see. You're doing this for yourself. You're doing this in quiet. And that's the important part of this particular statement. Because you're doing, when you do it with silence, in confidence that he does not need to employ divination, when you're following your instincts and you're following the next logical step, and you have the plan laid out for you, you don't have to worry, oh, is this the right decision? Maybe I should go check. Is it the right decision or not? You know. That That's as simple as it is. You know the right decision at that point. So you don't have to go seeking others' validation for your decisions. So for our capstone, our sixth place line up here, the superior man brings about the change like a leopard and lesser men promptly switch their allegiance. To advance now brings misfortune. Righteousness, persistence brings good fortune to those who remain where they are. Superior man brings about change like a leopard. Swift, silent, done. Just like with the tiger aspect is what I'm hearing here. Lesser men will switch their allegiances. So you're doing all of this stuff quietly and you're making these grand changes. Everyone around you is like, oh, that will never work once it happens. Ooh, show me. Really? Uh, and that's the vibe that's coming forward here is those they're classified as lesser because they are followers They're not ready to step out on their own. Will they one day possibly but are they this month? No <laughs> and 
advancing now once you've completed your changes and your evolutions let everything settle don't keep pushing forward make those changes and then adjust because when you make big changes like the government changes or like in the text here or the righteous changes you're shifting things in a massive way for you once those shifts occur let the water still because you just sent out ripples and they're rippling everywhere it's not advisable once you make those big shifts to move forward see where everything is at pay attention to how it is so basically what I'm hearing here is by the end of October it's gonna be a quieter time because now you're in an observing state you've made the changes you've done the thing now it's time to just settle down watch what happens enjoy the rewards of your labor is the other part of that and then righteous persistence brings good fortune to those who remain where they are you've done the work you've put in the persistent time and effort and energy now is the time to settle down and enjoy what you've done because that is the moral ethical thing to do because you've already done all the work pushing forward now would actually show a form of greed a form of maleficence that's not actually what you were trying to do in the first place but that's how it's going to be perceived so it's definitely not going to work in your favor to jump ahead allow the revolution to occur make sure that you are you know your skin's a little bit thickened up so that you can handle what's coming because people don't like it when you change I mean it's really it's a struggle for some people because they're contented where they are and they want you to just to be I don't know misery loves company type thing but that's not for you that's not what's coming up this month for an October for our water family so it's definitely about moving forward stepping up and not really paying attention to what's going on emotionally or negative Nancy coming in at you so with that we'll hop over to our tarot readings um, I read for each week individually um, there's approximately five weeks in October so that's what we'll do I read a guide or guardian for each week a lesson or challenge or <laughs> guide or guardian a message from source and then a lesson or challenge from the tarot guide or guardian someone to guide you through the week guard you from unknown um, issues that may be popping up a message from source these are positive reinforcements they are um, sometimes it's advice sometimes it is just you've got this kid keep going and then the lesson or challenge from the tarot it's a lesson to work on or maybe an unexpected or unknown challenge that might be coming in that week so that one's kind of the real-time advice and a little bit more harsh information so with that we'll get started if you are new here hit that subscribe button drop a like on the video let me let me know what you think in the comments if this is the type of thing that you enjoy um, what part resonates things like that just a little positive feedback you know <laughs> or if I'm not doing something great as long as it is respectful let me know how I can improve with that uh, your first week's guide or guardian is the goddess Maya and Ruby aura quartz I'm not really familiar with Ruby aura quartz but if this is a description or a picture of it it's beautiful it's searing presence I am present I witness the truth that frees my heart and emboldens my mind with trust inspiration and determination with courage and willingness I see what I need to see when I need to see it that's a lot of C's I ground myself in this moment where all answers grace and healing reside I access deeper truth that sets me free I perceive through the clear and loving spiritual eye within I am divine divinity unfolding and all is well this first week is really about tapping into the peaceful part of who you are this is where you tap into that intuition that inner guidance that is allowing you to see forward in this month so if you're a stone person ruby or a quartz would be a good one to carry around with you the goddess Maya we're really working with energies of support understanding this but also opening this so you're able to see the wider range of what's coming ahead and when you're making big changes like revolutionary type changes within your life sometimes you need that little intuitive guidance at the beginning to kind of get the get the motor started in the right direction your second or your message from source is the healing lagoon rejuvenate recovery time to heal it is safe to stop when you're working on the inner world sometimes physical action is necessary but with this particular week it's saying you're doing the things that are going to set you up for big time success big time shifts in your life and awareness the healing lagoon is saying 
Don't forget, as you're pushing forward, to take the time to recover. Rest when needed. Don't allow your sleep to be disturbed because you're working so hard and so diligently on your projects because if you're not rested, things cannot be the best. And that's where it's saying this first week, you're doing the inner work, you're setting yourself up, but also take care of yourself as well. Don't push to the point where you're getting headaches from meditating for too long or you're trying to understand what's going on and it's causing stress. That's not the purpose of spiritual journeys. Those things happen. But what this is saying is this week, do the work, but don't push to the point where you're exhausted or tired. And if you do get that way, take a nap. <laughs> Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the king of water, trustworthy, compassionate, respected, and cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you, trustworthy and heartfelt advice, charity at work. We are working with the masculine aspect of water in this first week's uh, challenge. And what it's really saying is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, cultured. There will be people around you that ooze confidence. And they might try to lure you into, oh, if you do it my way, it will be so much better. You're doing your own thing here. You can listen to the advice, but you don't have to take it. Take the pieces of it that are work and apply it to your situation and go forward with it. But this is saying this first week is that gentle reminder with that lesson or challenge that yeah there's might be someone who's done something similar but it's not your path you can listen to their advice you can take what resonates for your journey but you don't have to take the whole thing and that's the important part is knowing when to say okay that's enough I don't need all of that I'll take this piece and trawl a law on my way so your second week's guide or guardian is the ascended master Merlin that's cool and the stone is the mystic Merlinite. I honestly have never heard of this stone. So <laughs> we have read the energy. I trust my gift for sensing and directing subtle energies. As I set clear intentions, I playfully and creatively work with energy and consciousness. I perceive deeper levels of reality with total trust that I am spiritually protected. I rest in the knowledge that all souls experience serving the spirit greater spiritual evolution and the healing of all humanity my confidence in the invisible and loving workings of spirit in the lives of all beings is effortless the ascended master merlin we're talking about the camelot version of merlin so this is a very powerful powerful wizard he had mastered all four of the elements he had mastered mastered cosmic energy he had the ability to look into someone's eyes and see the truth or the lies in every tone action and twitch of a person's body so what this is saying is in this second week you have you have gifts water has unbelievably powerful gifts in especially emotional senses so your clairs are a little bit more tapped tuned in tapped up than some of the other signs that's not to be braggart that's just fact of the nature here and with that you're able to see and read the energy better like with the I Ching you're doing a lot of things but you're doing them in quiet and silence you have to pick and choose very carefully when you decide to bring someone into your inner circle of the fold basically where you're going to talk about what you're doing and that's where you read the energy if you get the vibe that person is going to be a distraction or that person is going to try to tear down what you're doing then that person can stay over there that doesn't mean they're bad it just means they're not going to be in in alignment with you in this moment so Follow those inner twitches and urges because you'd be surprised how much uh, the universe actually does guide you in that respect. And working with the Ascended Master Merlin is a good option because it does help you understand what some of those gut instincts mean. Sometimes you'll get a similar instinct between two people. One of them is yes, the other one is like, meh, they're neutral. So it helps you understand yourself a little bit better in that respect. Your message from source is deep sea diving, the way of the mystic learned through experience and depth. This week, the second week, is really saying there's a lot of depth to your gifts that you have not explored yet. With Merlin, you're able to start tapping into that depth. You're starting to go into a deeper state. But with this card, it's also saying by doing so, you will tap into unknown resources, unknown knowledges, and sometimes unknown gifts, things that you... Uh, may not have even realized you had access to but with that the way of the mystic is the way of the mystery it's the way of 
knowing and being silent. It's that aspect of growth that most people tend to ignore. And it's not that they're doing it on purpose. They've been conditioned through um, the media, through religion, through other jobs, through parents who don't understand to shut down those mystery aspects of themselves. But the beautiful part is, is we're in a period of time right now, if you are looking in the spiritual world, things are shifting massively. People are waking up to their innate abilities in a way that is really hasn't been seen in at least the last 2,000 years or so. But we're also shifting out of the Kali Yuga into the Dwapara Yuga in the Hindu myths, which means we're shifting out of the physical dense. Everything is about, you know, the skin suit we wear. And we're shifting into a more spiritual uh, community and mindset, which is making us more aware of the mystic path, the mystery behind what's animating us. And that's what's coming forward for you is starting to understand and deepen that knowledge water of what you are, what you're capable of, and listening to those inner not that inner knowing, and that's where tapping into the Merlin energy is going to benefit as well. So your lesson or challenge is the king of earth. Generous, professional, responsible, practical, and successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered and the Midas touch. This ties into the I Ching where you're paying attention to the opportunities. This second week is when you're going to start really seeing those opportunities. You might see the one that your gut says, do this now. You might see that first one and be like, ooh, that doesn't feel right. Something's off here. Um, you might see all three. You might see just one. This is the week to really pay attention. It's a lesson in kind of tapping into those inner secrets because with Merlin, the deep sea diving energies, you're getting a lot of this learning to trust yourself. Your challenge this week is to, if an opportunity or when an opportunity uh, reveals itself, what are you going to do? What challenge, which direction are you going to go with it? Is it the right option or is it one that your gut's saying, don't do this? This is a little bit of a lesson, but a little bit of a challenge because it's saying this first week is when the first opportunity is going to arise. Are you ready for it? Or the second week? <laughs> your um, third week's <laughs> uh, guide or guardian is Ascended Master Kathumi and Moss Agate. It's the sacred ecosystem. The universe provides me with spiritual energy and charismatic magnetism to attract all beings in need of my light so I can fulfill my highest destiny as a healing presence within this world. I accept my place in the greater divine scheme, embracing supportive connections in the spiritual worlds and in the material world. With understanding that my fulfillment and the fulfillment of all beings is divinely intertwined, I give myself permission to plug in and receive. This third week, you are stepping into the big shifts, whether you realize them as there's something minor you're changing, a little small habit you're adjusting, or if it's like you're shifting big career choices. This is the third week is what they're saying is when you're going to notice that things are moving, but it's also the time to really not lean on, but be more open to your inner circle to help you to support you when necessary and to guide you if you need a little bit of help. But this third week, the only time you're reaching out is within your inner circle. Again, the outside community doesn't need to know and doesn't need to be involved. But this is saying this third week is the time when you're going to start really seeing these shifts occur. And this is also when you might need a little support from those closest to you. And your message from source is the wishing well, well, unexpected gifts, kindness, and karmic jewels. The universe has been conspiring in your favor on this one. You've been doing a lot of the baseline work. You've been doing the inner work. You've been setting yourself up. You've been slogging through the um, stress, the emotional upheavals that may have been going on, especially for the last few months. But this third week, the wishing well, as you're going through these changes and you're kind of seeing what's going on you're being supported by your inner circle this is when some of the unexpected stuff because your goal is over here but some of the side quests if you will are stepping in to support you to benefit and uphold their side of the agreement and that's when you're going to see some of this coming in is in this third week and uh, we'll do this le uh, lesson or challenge and then I've got a little bit of information about some stuff um, they just reminded me. So your lesson or challenge is number 18, the moon with Archangel Haniel. 
important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, releasing fears that hold you back. There's a lot of things going on and it's not all going to be up front. And this is like, as in the I Ching talks, the leopard and the tiger, they move in silence, but in power. This energy is what's going on is things that you're doing behind the scenes. And there may be parts that you're, you're pushing forward and you're like, I don't know how this is gonna turn out. Don't worry about it. You stay focused. The universe is doing their part. God's source divine is going to help align you in the way that you need the most because you are working with a divine path at this point. It's not just, it's me against the world, I'm beating my head in the wall. The divine is helping guide you through your instincts, through your the signs, the symbols, the messages that are coming in. And the moon is saying, again, we're tapping into that subconscious energy, that intuitive knowledge, uh, if you will, the mystic aspect of who you are. And water, this is your playground. This is where you live. So this is something that you may not even notice as an active component because it is so second nature to you that it just happens. So what I was going to say about how these go, I read first, second, third, fourth, fifth week, but for you, they may not fall into that pattern. So if they're, you know, if the what I'm reading as the third week is your first week, then go with that. So if they rearrange a little bit, that is totally all right. It's all in... These are general readings, so it's all in how the universe decides to bring it forward for you as to how it actually shows up. So um, we'll hop into our fourth week here. My cards don't run away. We have the Ascended Master Yogananda and Rhodonite, Empowered Service. I step into my rightful spiritual place with dignity, reverence, and grace. My higher purpose is empowered by the divine. My connection to the light is strong and unwavering and enduring so much so that my trust in its power and presence is unconditional. I accept the invitation from the universe to step up to a new level of expression and fulfillment of my higher purpose. I open my heart to the divine harvest of blessings pouring into my soul. I recognize the readiness within my being. As you're going forward this fourth week, it is really saying, now you're starting to see how doing things without the pomp and circumstance, without the loudness. You're doing them quietly because you're doing them in alignment with God's source divine. Now what happens from your small quiet actions in the ripple effect, that's kind of outside your control. But you control what happens here. You are the focal point or the impact of the pebble to this pond. So you can control you. And that's what this is saying is as you are going through this month, you're starting to realize that your little changes, your improvements, your spiritual seeking guidance and looking for the more righteous path in the aspect of morals or ethics or however that manifests for you, you taking care of you and improving yourself to be a better person every day, which is our purpose here, that ripples out and that is that empowered service. That is a divine gift and a divine calling. Some people go through their entire life completely oblivious to the fact that this is what they're doing, but they make such massive impacts in the world by their small actions that everyone knows who they are. Other people who try to push themselves onto others as, I am this person, they're failing because they're doing it for the wrong reason. They're not doing it for the aspect of service. They're doing it for the aspect of, look at me, look at my ego. And what is coming up with this one is, this week, understand, you may not get to see the final outcome to other people. You see your final outcome. And that's the important part is you're working on your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. You're doing so with the help of God's source divine and all of your guides and guardians. That is what you are working on. Other people may witness what you're doing and they may want to emulate it. Some may come to you and ask about it. But it's not that you're going out there and bragging about it. And that's the point of this fourth week's guide or guardian. Your message from source is Atlantis. Keep the big vision, stay in alignment as you grow. Again, reinforcing that fact of it does not matter what other people are doing. This is about your goals. This is about your dreams. This is about your ambitions. This is about your spiritual growth as well. You are here to connect to God's source divine. You are here to connect to the spiritual world. And when I say connect, it means awaken to the connection. We're all connected. It's a matter of being consciously aware of it and being open to the communication through it. You are approaching the gate to Atlantis. You are in that state of opening that door. 
And that's what God Source Divine wants you to remember is you're the one who gets to have a say here. This is where you make those decisions in quiet, you make them quickly, and you move forward in that quiet strength. Think of leopards and tigers as you're doing that because it's a good that's a good indicator. Not everyone's going to see what you're doing, and you're doing it so quietly and so powerfully that once it's done, then they're like, wait, what just happened? Because that's where you're at. You're doing the behind-the-scenes work, but they don't need to know about all the details. Your lesson or challenge is the two of fire. You've come into your own new partnerships or contracts, continuing to move forward. This is saying that along the way, you're going to help bond. You might be bringing a new person in to your inner circle, or it could be someone from your inner circle that is specifically very much a part of your new growth period. And that's going to bring a little bit of a passion bond, not amorous, but passion as in we are both focusing on this one goal and it is deep in our souls. It's triggering that fire energy. And that's the part of what's coming up is the lesson is understanding that yes, you're doing this on your own, but if one or two people happens to come into the equation and they're on the same mission, they're fired up like you are, then this is saying work with that energy. It doesn't mean seek them out. If they come to you, that's different. Or if they're in your inner circle already and you just notice that they're usually the ones that are right there next to you in these situations, then they're probably going to be a long-term partner within this project you're working on or on the spiritual journey. And that's that's a unique thing because not everybody's going to be okay with spiritual advancement. Some people want to veer off to a different way. That's their decision. That's their path. And But this one's saying you're, there's a very high possibility that a little bit of a challenge is going to be someone wants to be right there next to you. And it's okay if you're ready for that. So this, the final week of October, the fifth week, which is also the week of Samhain or Halloween, and this kind of cracks me up that this card came up for it, is the goddess Kali and the stone is Black Obsidian. Sacred Revolution, theme of your month. Uh, I release allegiance to the old cycles, opening my soul to the birthing process of the Divine Mother who guides me into the highest fulfillment of my potential. An entirely new order is being established in respect of this greater unfolding power, I am willing to be moved, inspired, and guided to embrace new approaches and responses to life. I possess the courage required for change. I trust that the universe loves me and I let it grow. This fifth week is the week where you've seen what happens. You're aware of the changes that you have made. And this is the week where you don't make movements. Righteous persistence in this instance means to be still and know. This last week is where you start to really see the changes that are coming forward. It's also the time for quietness. You've done the work, you've done the actions, you've reestablished some things in your life, you've adjusted things. The revolution has occurred, so to speak. And with that, it's now time to A, reap the rewards of your revolution, but B, see what else has changed. Your focus has been on one thing primarily. That's the thing you've been aiming for. That's the thing you've achieved. What else fell into place? What unexpected gifts occurred? What side quests re resolved as you completed yours? This is this fifth week is saying, take the break, observe what happened. The changes have been drastic this month. Whether it's minuscule changes or massive changes in your world, there have been some big things being overhauled. Um, your me message from source is cleansing, releasing the old energetic tune of new beginnings. You have been going through this month doing a significant uh, energetic tune up. Now is time to understand you are making space for new things to come in. You had to clear out the old so that the new could be born. You had to uh, dig out the silver polish and polish up this family silver. You had to degrease the engine compat parts to make it a newer vehicle, newer engine because you're replacing parts on it. This is the time where you understand what this month has done. It has been clearing, cleansing, changing, big time changes because you're stepping into a new and more beautiful form of who you are. A more potent form of your will is stepping forward in this time and your spiritual de growth and development definitely has stepped up a little bit in this month. So this last week is a time to kind of enjoy and rest and relax, but also watch and observe 
what all your changes shifted in the world around you. Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the eight of earth. Skilled work is rewarded. Learning all there is to know about a topic. Going back to school. In this aspect, the school is what you've accomplished. You're looking back to be like, whoa, I actually changed some things. Or, whoa, I learned a lot this month. The Eight of Earth is saying it's a time for the hard work that you've been doing to be rewarded. Now you're seeing the results of the work that you have been putting in, spiritually, physically, however that's been manifesting. This week is really about understanding that you have come to a conclusion of, of a revolution in your life, but you've also shifted the focus into a rebirth experience, an experience that has opened and awakened you to a higher path, a higher calling, so to speak. And it could be something as simple as you decided to quit eating certain kind of food or you decided to cut out a certain um, habit in your life. Something that seems very small and minuscule can have the biggest changes overall. And that's what this last week is realizing that that little change or even big change shifted the entire path of your existence. So with that, I will wrap up this reading. I hope you all have a great month of October. Again, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Um, and if you like this type of content, please hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video.